Hi folks, welcome to another Winners in the Cloud episode. This time a very special one, as I'm pumped to be joined by Pavan Davaluri, a long-term Microsoft veteran and now Corporate Vice President for Windows, Surveys, Mixed Reality and Windows Cloud. We will be talking about Windows Cloud and how AI and Silicon play an important role as part of our future. So let's get started. Hey, welcome, Pavan. I'm super excited. I'm pumped that you are here in this Microsoft uh, Redmond studio. And can you tell a little bit to the audience where you are? We have been partnering over like the last period of time yeah. on several Windows Cloud product integrations with Windows 365. So Absolutely. can you tell a little bit more about yourself? For sure. Yeah, first of all, thank you for having me, Christian. I appreciate being here and getting a moment with you today. My journey at Microsoft has been an amazing one. I joined the company as a college hire. I was in uh, the business of building PC peripheral products back then, if you can believe it, mice and keyboards and game controllers and webcams. That's cool. um, and I spent then about 10 years or so in the Surface organization. Um, I led the development efforts for a variety of generation of devices back then. Um, and then for the last three or four years or so, I've been working in silicon and platform engineering inside the Windows organization uh, prior to taking on the Windows devices role. I am uh, grateful to be here. It's been an incredible journey. And I feel like we have an incredible team, an incredible vision, mission ahead of us. And we, you know, we have the opportunity to do this in an amazing company. Yeah, that's great. We went to a great journey together. Yep. And it's really cool that you have been part of that like silicon part, the, the part that you not always see that's there, but it yeah, is. It's kind of underneath the hood. Here. So yeah. before we go into that cool part of the conversation, sure. let's start with an icebreaker. Okay. And I want to know who's your favorite person or hero in your life? Could be a fiction person or a real person. A superhero uh, maybe? Superhero. So I will start with mine first. Okay, so yeah. I'm always get compared with uh, Batman, as Super. I'm always there, but not always visible. Got it. So I'm curious what's yours. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, you pick Batman. Um, I want. I want to then say I feel like I should be in the uh, in the uh, DC universe at some level, and then my instinct would be to say something like Wonder Woman. Honestly, the <laughs> marquee character. Uh, but these days, you know, I just have to go with Taylor Swift. <laughs> I feel like she's holding up the economy, uh, generating a wave of energy across the world, certainly superhero status from what I can see. Oh, that's great. I'm not going to ask you your favorite song. Thank so you. Let's go to the next. <laughs> I may not qualify beyond that, so thank you. <laughs> so um, AI is everywhere these days, but yeah. Copilot and everything, and it's coming in Windows and everything. Can you shed some light on how AI becomes part of our future of Windows, Windows Cloud, and other products that you're leading? Yeah, I think AI, from what we can see across the board, and certainly within the company, I think AI is a tidal wave of a technology change for us, very similar to eras of change we saw with PC and mobile, cloud, and, and now you know, computing moving into the world of AI for sure. For us at Microsoft, I think uh, the marquee AI experience for us is Copilot. And in Windows, very much like the start button is the entry into Windows, for me, Copilot is your entry point into the world of AI on your PC. And I think work we are doing both on the device side and the cloud side is really to enhance what that AI experience can look like and what those Copilot capabilities can look like on Windows devices, both in the cloud and on the edge. That's pretty cool. So over the last 10 years, the strategy in Microsoft Windows such as leadership really changed and the move to cloud is stronger than ever before with AI and everything coming together. How have you seen that like shift in culture and strategy being a pivot or an important role sure. in terms of the shift of Windows moving to the cloud? Sure. One of the things that people talk about, Christian, is this notion that culture eats strategy for breakfast. And I think that has been particularly true for us at Microsoft in the last 10 years or so. One of the ideas that have really helped us move forward, I think, is this notion as Saj just talked about around growth mindset. And for us with growth mindset, it has given us the space to be curious, to learn, to iterate, to fail. And I think that kind of environment in itself allows for innovation and taking risks and coming up with new bold ideas. And a lot of the work, quite frankly, your organization is doing in my mind is a product of the fact that we have that kind of attitude to learn, to grow, to you know, obsess with our customers, and then you know, drive innovation and you know, deliver real value. So, so I think it's happening, it's exciting to see. It's awesome you're acknowledging that. The partners has been, partnership has been super strong between you, your team, even before that you came in the business right. unit on board and leading this big charter that I just mentioned yeah. too. It's true. How do you, do you compare other products or services in Microsoft going to a similar transition from like the past as well to the future of cloud and software as a service in a relationship to Windows 365? It's a great question. 
Um, I think one of the best patterns we have within the company is the transition that happened in office for us where we had Office on-prem alone as a product. And today we have a diverse spectrum of options from Office on-prem through being able to deliver Microsoft 365 as a collective solution for a class of customers. And I think we see this opportunity with Windows as well, where we have great Windows devices coming to market. We're driving innovation in the ecosystem, but we also have the opportunity to have delivered Windows experiences to the cloud and meet customers where they're at, especially when you think about the diversity of the ecosystem ahead of us. Uh, I think we have an opportunity to deliver Windows in a variety of different options going forward. That's amazing. And I hear that from customers as well. They see that reflection too. And what we really feel with customers is that they, they, they see Windows 365 and they are super excited about it and yeah. then they expand as well to more use cases and right. such. So it's yeah. really cool. And the reflection point with Office and other products in Microsoft, I really feel that that's happening right that's, now. That is. It's kind of exciting. It's kind of exciting. And to your point, it's being driven by customer demand, which is also uh, super empowering, I think, for us. Exactly. As well. More and more customers are looking for unification and simplification. This right. is really like right. an example Key. of that. That's yes, right. Exactly. Of our uh, AVD and Win365 propositions. Yeah, and that's a good segue in the next question All right. um, that I want to ask you. But first, I'll, I'll go. Okay. So, Windows 365 AVD are going skyrocket with customer adoption and in the company, it's like a very strong feeling of like, how to move to the cloud is happening with Windows yes. as well. Yeah. Um, so let me go first. Like two features that I, I'm very excited about is Windows 365 boot to boot straight into a cloud PC from the Windows 11 login screen. Yeah. As well as for Azure Virtual Desktop, the new auto scaling feature. Yes. So now I want to ask you, what's your favorite set of features? <laughs> That's a bit of a tricky one. I feel like it's first. It's been an amazing learning journey with you, and I appreciate internal to our teams. I get to be on the self host and learn and try and. Look at all of the new features you guys have in the pipeline. First, I agree with you on both those features being great ones, and I love them as well. Um, uh, especially now, I feel like with my new machines, I, I enjoy Windows Boot and Windows Switch every day. <laughs> the integration of Windows 365 into Windows 11 that we're seeing, especially in the last you know, 2023 window of time, fantastic. I also love, most recently, the work uh, we've done on the Windows app. And the fact that Windows app now is available on Windows, on web, Mac, other platforms, super excited to see uh, something that I'm, I'm learning to appreciate and starting to use uh, more often as well. Yeah, it's great to see how the vision really comes to life with blending Windows from like the log on screen into the cloud PC, right. as well as cross-platform, as you said, with the Windows app. Yeah. So yeah. it's great to uh, to see and hear your favorite yeah. features. Actually, well. the GPU SKUs are another fantastic thing. You know, a relatively thin and light machine, you're backed by GPU SKUs in the cloud, you can start running Blender and these workloads that otherwise a PC in that class would not be able to do. It's it's kind of mind-bending. It's, it's phenomenal. Yeah, it's what is even more cool, in my opinion, is that the cloud computing part moving to buying compute yeah. uh, versus right. uh, yeah, yeah. The, the computing device app. pattern changes. Exactly, the yeah. subscription parts you pay for your on demand kind of compute part with right. GPU as an example. It's just amazing. And that's cool. what the future is, in my opinion, I too. Agree. I agree. So, moving a little bit to the hardware part of like, Sure. And, and a Windows environment and Windows in the cloud and such. Like over the last 20 years, um, CPU, RAM, all those kind of way of doing the silicon and, and the, the, the motherboards and all those things coming together at an SOC yes. ha hasn't been changed that much. And now with like sure. MPU and other things coming Sorry. along and innovation there, can you shed some light how that will change the future of Windows streaming and Windows cloud and AI? Yeah, I think that's a great question, Christian. I think you're right. In the last couple of years, uh, with the advent of AI and AI spanning both the cloud and the client, one of the places of innovation we're seeing in the Windows Silicon platform and ecosystem space is the rise of neural engines. And I think neural engines give us the ability to run AI models, inference specifically, at a level of power and performance that you don't have through other infrastructures like CPUs and GPUs in them alone in themselves. And so we in Windows are busy at work putting infrastructure in place to take advantage of the power of these NPUs and having developers and developers you know, create platforms and applications that take advantage of these AI capabilities on the edge. One of the other big things we're investing in is idea hybrid AI loop pattern. And the reason why this is magical for us, it takes advantage of both compute on the cloud as well as compute locally. Compute locally is important for things like responsiveness and hence privacy, um, being able to provide you know, low latency type responses. And then you take advantage of compute in the cloud where you house massive data sets, you want to cross platform infrastructure, you know, large scale inference. And with the hybrid AI loop, we're able to bring the best of both worlds together. 
And for us with Windows 365, we can now deliver these co-pilots and these hybrid capabilities, both on local devices as well as through Windows 365. And that to me is super exciting. It's really cool to hear that. And it's super cool as well to hear your passion in this space and your sure. experience really comes to yeah. life here as a leader and your past experiences too. So it's a beautiful synergy, I think, of where our past investments are going to come into play for our future bets. Exactly. So the device still remains very important for that like local experience, but the right. data centers that we have with Azure are also important. So blending those with yeah. hybrid AI and everything is, is super exciting. It's kind of exciting. I agree. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I will have you back at some point to do an update there. I'd love to. Where we are. <laughs> so before we close, uh, any holiday plans for you? Like, do you have some plans with the family? Christmas plans or something like you know, that? Um, yes, we, you know, last couple of months, as you can imagine, have been a little intense. So certainly yeah. going to get a few minutes. Uh, I'm going to spend some time with family and I encourage you and all of you all to get a chance to get a break over the holidays if you can, of course. Great. So how can people stay in touch with you? I would suggest folks just use LinkedIn for now. It's a great way for me to listen, learn, I think, and just see how people are feeling with our products and experiences. So, uh, so if, you know, LinkedIn is a great way to find me. Okay, great. Thanks again for being uh, the last guest of 2023. Thank you. And I want to wish you, everyone watching, a happy holidays and the best for 2024. See you back next year as we have a very special episode about Windows 365 and Ancient Suite coming up. So happy holidays.